Good morning, friends. Happy Saturday. Um, today we are in 1 John um, chapter 2, verses 28 through chapter 3, verse 3. So it's just like this little section right here, the end of 2 to the beginning of 3. And um, we're talking about what does it mean for us to be children of God? Um, this is a an idea that like, or a doctrine, I guess, that um, shows up all throughout the New Testament. I would encourage you guys even to look at some other passages if you want to look more into this. Um, Galatians 3, 26 through 4, 7, and John 1, 12 through 13, both touch on it. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at John next week. I think Shelly will be talking about John 1. Um, but I wanted to look at, like, what does this mean um, that we become children of God? Um, so a couple things. First, um, in that time, um, well, actually even now, but adoption... Um, meant that you had the right not only to your the name and the citizenship of the person who adopted you but the inheritance of them and so when we are adopted by god um, we become brothers and sisters with christ um, and we are there's other places now where it talks about us being heirs um, to the inheritance of christ and to the inheritance of god um, and even that means the person who adopted you has now full responsibility um, to care for you and full authority over you the same way a parent does. Um, and I love even just this picture of like being welcomed in to God's family. Um, but I even wanted to look at like what specifically in this passage um, does it say about our relationship with God in conjunction with us being children of God. Um, and I was thinking a lot about, I don't know, my dad and how I feel so safe um, to go to him even whenever I've like messed up um, in January I got in a little car accident it was my fault I rear-ended somebody um, and you know I mean I felt terrible about it and it was really upsetting uh, but my dad was the first person that I called because I knew even though um, you know I had messed up his car um, that he loved me and that he would comfort me um, and he would give me wisdom as to how to get through this I knew that he was a safe place. I had confidence to go to him. Um, and I feel that way all the time about whatever's going on in my life, that I have confidence to go and take that to my dad and that he loves me and he wants to know and he wants to hear. Um, and my dad is a sinner. Um, and so our Heavenly Father is perfect and full of love and grace for us. Um, and so all the more he loves us and he wants to know what's going on um, in our lives and he wants us to approach him with confidence um, knowing that we are safe with him because of Jesus and the work that Jesus has done. Um, verse 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we ha may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Man, so much of the time I think we tend to think of God as someone who, like, I don't know, is, like, looking at us and making sure we're doing everything right and is going to be quick to jump and condemn us when we mess up. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, God sees our messes. Um, he sees our sin. Um, and that he's not sitting there counting them against us. Um, because if you know Jesus, then you are a child of God. You've been adopted by him. And he sees Jesus as perfection when he looks at you. And so we can have confidence and not have shame um, when God comes back. And we can not have shame even in approaching him in prayer and things like that. And it's just amazing to me that, like, this love that God has for us, the fact that we are his children, should cast out and fight our shame. Uh, I hope that this passage is encouraging to you guys and, uh, I don't know, lifts you um, and reminds you of how much you are loved by God.